Hello, hello, and welcome to something very different for the channel. Not many of you will know that I'm a bit of a movie nerd, a bit of a TV show nerd. You all know I'm a nerd, but there's a, there's a new layer to peel at here it, of nerdom. And uh, this is that I'm not, I'm not going to review a show or a movie as if I am a film critic or someone that is knowledgeable in any way. I am re I'm reviewing this still as a book reviewer because Midnight Mass is the best audiobook you can watch with your eyeballs. I knew the pathway like the back of my hand. Welcome home, honey. Where you belong. Now, firstly, the, the first thing I want to get out of the way is that this was a masterpiece to me. Um, it's seven episodes, about an hour long each, and it just drew me in. It was heartbreaking. I cried probably four or five times throughout the runtime of the show. Um, I was provoked in thoughts. I was um, just completely floored by every element of the show, every creative decision made. And this show is an extremely creative show. And I think thought provoking is the best way to describe this show. Just thought provoking. The themes explored in this show are, are numerous. It can, you can just go for days. You've got religion, life and death, renewal, love, sacrifice, peer pressure, group think. What else have I got down here? Addiction. There are so many that are just built upon and played with and layered upon each other to create this, what I would describe a prose-like deepness and a prose-like delving into human beings. But for those of you that don't know what the show's about, this actually just let you know what it is. And before that, if you, because this is something that I have never done before. If you do enjoy, I would appreciate if you do leave a like or something, anything at all, just to be like, nice, good job, brother. Um, just so I kind of know whether people are interested in this, whether you're all like, stick to books, you're fucking nerd. Whatever it is, let me know. But the basic element to this show is that Riley Flynn has, at the beginning of the show, killed a woman in a drink driving accident and has been sentenced to four years in prison and uh, upon coming out of prison has lost his faith and has returned back home to the fishing island where he grew up with his family that are all devoutly Christian um, and at the same time the priest on this this island uh, has been sent away on a mission has been sent to Jerusalem to walk the path of Jesus and uh, he's like 80 something has like it seems like he has dementia and um, when coming back it's it be, they've been informed that he has been taken ill and that a new priest has taken his place and really that's all you need to know in terms of this show is about the life of the people on this island um, this small enclosed community that are suffering in terms of there has been an oil spill in the area which has affected their fishing uh, people are leaving the the town is dwindling the population is dwindling and um, you are seeing the return of Riley Flynn who has um, come back from killing a human being and the, the the arrival of the new priest and the relationships and the, the ex exploration of religion in this small community so why have I called this the best audiobook you can see with your eyeballs? One, it sounds funny, uh, but two is monologues. This show's centerpieces are incredibly well written, rich, and character inviting deep dives of monologues. They are five minute long, just emotive explanations of of these deep-seated themes and discussions and thoughts that are being explored by these characters. Um, if you cannot get through the monologues, I completely understand because there is a sense of like, what's happening here? Like, what, what's going on? But it all wraps together and creates such a wonderful whole. And the 
the acting alongside the monologues, the, the writing is fantastic, um, but the, the acting as well is incredible. I've never heard of any of these actors at all, but they do such an amazing job. They are incredible of delivering these lines and the camera work is so... The reason I describe this as, in some points, an audiobook is because sometimes you don't even have to look at the screen because the camera work is so minimal. It's just this slight zooming in at the camera. It's just this slight zooming in on the character as they're expositing this monologue. And sometimes when you look away, you get that sense of richness that's still there because the when you take a monologue of that length and put it down, that is just almost prosy. Like the way that they're talking is almost prosy and you can imagine it as a story and the construct of this because it's like a seven hour, basically a seven hour film creates this kind of vision that feels like a like a like a short audiobook. Like that's how long you would listen to an audiobook for usually. And so there's this whole image created that is just amazing. The reason they work so well is because it creates the 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 atmosphere, the ambience of of thoughtfulness. Because you've got these characters that are trying to grow and trying to change and trying to discuss their lives. And it creates that idea of they're thinking about it so you think about it and you've got so long listening to the words that they're saying that you can't help but reflect on how you feel and reflect on what you're thinking and it does a wonderful job of giving the audience that time to really sink into the world that we're watching and have thoughts as we're watching um, and, and usually when that happens it's very easy to then be like oh I know where the show's going if you get what I mean where the foreshadowing can sometimes be so heavy that when it's a slower scene because they're trying to fill that gap and and that leads to kind of heavy-handed making people understand whereas this show there are so many bits where I was genuinely shocked by what happens because I didn't anticipate it and the twists and the turns completely took me by surprise which for people that know me that usually isn't the case. Usually I am making so many guesses about what's coming. Like in books, I will constantly guess what's going to happen next that I eventually at least hit my, like the nail on the head with a few of them. Most of this show, I was completely just in awe of what was happening that I just wanted to experience it and didn't even want to guess because I didn't want to spoil the emotion, the, re uh, the revelation that would happen. And... It was such a good experience. To give specifics in terms of like, kind of ideas that why I love this show so much, one of them would be um, the exploration of there are two Muslim characters on the island. There is uh, Sheriff Hassan and his son. And um, Sheriff Hassan has arrived and taken up this this role of, of power in the city, uh, in, the city in, the, in the village. They have wonderful scenes that view the, 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 the light but constant prodding the the alienation of these people in in the, the community the way that the othering that that's the best word for it the the othering of a people that is done um to the sheriff and it's one of those ones where he can't address it he can't be like this was wrong because there's such light but constant references and little digs where if you reference it, you seem like you could be petty or you seem like it couldn't, you seem like you could be, you could be accused of taking things too seriously or accused of, oh, you're just trying to, you're just trying to make us feel bad and that type of thing. And it's only when you see the, the constant level of it that you understand the othering that happens to people. And in terms of the reason that worked so well for me is that like growing up when I was a kid, I grew up in a, a very multicultural area. Like, my friend group was a Christian, a Muslim, a Sikh, a Jehovah Witness, and me who was raised without religion. Um, and there was no... Everyone listened to what other people's religion were and kind of found it interesting. At least I very much did. Found it interesting learning about other people's religions. And then moving out of that kind of when you're seven and eight and people are allowing you just to be happy 
and you move into that kind of early adulthood and you see moving into a predominantly larger Christian community and that that othering that happens, that sense of alienation and not understanding who these people are, not understanding other cultures and as a result not wanting to learn, just understanding to keep them keep them separate. And this show does an amazing job. It deals with it very delicately. Um it's not it's not heavy handed, it's not preachy is not like telling you what to think it's just displaying what happens and not everyone's right everyone is wrong at least some point in this show this show doesn't have a right answer it's not telling you who is correct it's simply putting a mirror up and making people look at themselves and in terms of uh, like another example would be um would be Riley Flynn himself, the, the main character, the protagonist of the show, uh, that you are following this recovering addict, um, this man who has lost his faith, coming into a society that also is othering him for not being religious anymore, um, and watching his interactions, how he feels, how he feels left behind, how he feels re regret that he can't feel towards religion anymore, his longing to be able to do that but also reluctance to get involved the family's reaction to him it does a lot of things with that character and also in terms of a recovering addict as well usually in in any medium when you give a character a massive problem in their their backstory that something that happens really early or before the story takes place and then have them deal with that in the show you've already put the highest stakes it can be at the beginning and it can only go down from there and it's hard to reclaim that this show does it masterfully because everything about that event is intrinsic and key to the problems that arise later that has to happen at the beginning for everything to happen later and um so for anyone worried about that kind of thing the show does it masterfully in that sense as well. It's not doing it for no reason. It's not It's not a Wheel of Time parent situation. It's not one of those. This is very clearly a, a, a decision that had to be made and, and something that has to happen for the rest of the show to take place. And finally, the priest. I don't know how to pronounce it, I haven't looked at anything. I think it's Hamish Linklater. Hamish Linklater is the actor that plays the priest. And without getting into any spoilers or anything, his performance is absolutely perfection. It, it, there is not a flaw in it. The cadence to his voice, the way he speaks, how he holds your attention, the, the emotive to subdued, the way he interacts with different people, Everything about his performance is absolutely incredible. I can't even tell you one thing. One thing in this show looks fucking amazing for the budget, for like what this is. It looks incredible and they allow it in completely natural lighting with every flaw that could be shown would be shown and it looks m incredible. I don't know how they did it in terms of making it look so good in natural light. And if you've watched the show, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know how they did that in terms of not having anything look slightly bad. But overall, if you're a fan of audiobooks, if you're a fan of emotive language and deep diving into characters, this this aesthetic, this Stephen King creepy tone, an exploration of religion, all of this stuff, immense acting, then this is the absolutely perfect show for you and it's a limited series you just have to watch seven episodes and you don't have to worry about fucking season two to ruin it or anything at all you just get to watch the seven episodes and go i watched a masterpiece that i don't have to worry about them ruining i loved it i could talk about this show forever because it's it's up there with twin peaks the return now as a modern masterpiece and so that's it that is my review of Midnight Mass. It's on Netflix. It's there waiting for you. So if you have enjoyed, please do like. Please do subscribe. It, it really does help. Leave like whatever. And as always, just have a nice rest of your day.